Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, speak to us and through us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. This has been a wonderful Advent season. Looked at Jesus as the creator. We said that before there was a was Jesus. Before yesterday was yesterday. Jesus. From the beginning, it was Jesus. How he is still taking chaos out of our lives. It is he who can speak peace when the world is turning upside down. It is he who brings order. We looked at Jesus as a sustainer, sustaining everything that is. We see him holding the universe together. We said without him, the whole thing would fall apart. Amen. How he continues to work and to minister to us even today. Then we look at Jesus as a sin bearer. How his humble beginning happened in a cradle in Bethlehem. And we follow that to his tragic death on the cross of Calvary. And how his death paid the price for our sin. So this morning I would like for us to look at Jesus one more time and see him as Savior. Our text for today is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11, which reads, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Also in the book of Hosea, chapter 13, verses 4 through 6, where it says, I have been the Lord your God ever since you came out of Egypt. You shall acknowledge no other God but me, no Savior except me. I cared for you in the wilderness, in the land of the burning heat. When I fed them, they were satisfied. When they were satisfied, they became proud. Then they forgot me. Well, the Savior provides salvation to the people of Israel. Most of us are familiar with the story of the children of Israel, how they spent 400 years in bondage to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Yeah. Yeah. It is a story that has been dramatically told down through the history. Hollywood has told their many versions of the story of Moses. Yeah. How God used him in the deliverance of the Israelites. How God used him to challenge the Pharaoh of Egypt to free the children of Israel, sending ten plagues upon the nation until Pharaoh relented. How Pharaoh then changed his mind and pursued the Israelites to the Red Sea. Yeah. Most of us still see that picture of Cecil B. DeMille's when the Red Sea passed, Moses holds out his hand and the children are able to cross over on dry land. Yeah. He used them, or rather God saved his people from bondage and led them to freedom. Yes. God was with them. The evidence of his presence was a pillar of fire and a cloud. In Hosea, God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. You shall acknowledge no other God but me, no other Savior except me. Yeah. So we know how the people would frequently get caught up with what was going on around them yeah. as they made their journey into the promised land. Mm -hmm. How they would be led astray into idolatry. 
worship the golden calf. Uh -huh. They will forget all about God, their faith. God was the one who brought them to freedom, yeah. delivering them out of Egypt, drowning the army of Pharaoh in the Red Sea. God was the one mm -hmm. who took care of them in the wilderness. It was God who was the one who miraculously provided water and matter in a dry and thirsty land. God who never let their, let their sandals wear out in all of their 40 year wilderness journey. God was with them. He was with them when they found themselves in the middle of the desert and snakes biting them left and right. He was with them in every crisis and situation. But Hosea writes, I cared for you in the desert, mm -hmm. in the land of the burning heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I fed them, they were satisfied. You see, he provided for their every need. I want you to know that the same God oh, yeah. who took care of the children of Israel is still taking care of his people today. But Hosea writes, when they were fed, and when they were satisfied, they became proud, then they forgot God. That's exactly what happened. Even though God took care of their every need, when they complained about hunger, he fed them. When they were thirsty, he had Moses bring water from a rock. Yeah. Yeah. God took care of their every need. Uh -huh. and, 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 and that's exactly what he's doing today. God cared for them. Don't you know he cared for you? Oh, yeah. He cared for them. Uh -huh. He loved them. Mm -hmm. He sustained them. Yes. And they forgot him. Uh -huh. Isn't that something like today? I want you to jump ahead 1,500 years later from the time of Hosea to the year 6 B.C. The Savior comes providing salvation for all mankind. Yeah. And he comes and an angel appears to some shepherds on a hillside mm -hmm. and, and told them that the Savior was born. Yeah. These shepherds had no expectation. They were out. <coughs> Watching their sheep by night, the scripture said. Uh -huh. These dirty, smelly brothers well. all of a sudden saw from heaven. Yeah. And, and an angel spoke to them. And then a whole bunch of angels came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And they began to proclaim glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill to all humanity. Yeah. Jesus became Emmanuel. Yeah. He became God with us. Yeah. Only this time, God wasn't providing salvation from Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. He wasn't leading them out of their bondage in Egypt. Yeah. This time, God was providing salvation from sin and death. Yes. Jesus was with them, performing miracles among them, sustaining them, comforting them, teaching them. But as often as can happen, people get caught up in the politics of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So in the midst of Jesus' miracles and all he was doing, people turned their backs on him. Yeah. 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 And yet this was God's plan from the beginning. Jesus was to be born into this world and bring the good news of salvation to set the captives free, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he was to die on a cross for the salvation uh, of from sin, to bring freedom from bondage and sin that enslaved his people. Jesus came as Savior for the world. Amen. But many people turned to their fear. Mm -hmm. They embraced the things of this world instead of embracing Christ. Now let's jump ahead to about 2018. In 2019. Well, 
the Savior is still providing salvation Amen. for you and for me. Jesus is our Emmanuel. He is our Savior with us. He's feeding us like he did with manna in the desert, like he did with loaves of bread and fishes. He's sustaining us. He's loving us. He's ministering to us. He is here, brothers and sisters, today. He is here. Hallelujah. Yeah. He is here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So when Kirk Talley wrote, he's here. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. And you'll never be the same. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I want to caution you as well. Down through history, God has been Emmanuel. He has been with us. And yet, we have turned away. We have become distracted by the things of the world. It happened in the wilderness. It happened in Jesus' day, and it continues to happen today. Jesus is our Savior. He's with us today, but Christmas has in some way become a distraction. So much of what many schools are trying to avoid even mentioning his name, or even the word Christmas. And there is a very real danger that what happened as recorded in Hosea, that they forgot God, that there's a danger that the same thing has happened today. People are forgetting about Jesus, our Savior, our reason for the season. He's here, but so many people don't care, and they don't have want to have anything. Let me share something with you interesting this morning that I found in my research for the sermon. In Webster's 1928 dictionary, Savior is defined as the one that saves or preserves, but probably applied only to Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, who has opened the way to everlasting salvation by his obedience and death and who is therefore called Savior by way of distinction, the Savior of men, the Savior of the world. Then in Webster's Dictionary 19 and 13, Savior reads, the one who saves, preserves, or delivers from destruction. Specifically, the Savior, he who brings salvation to men, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer. Uh, today's Webster Dictionary says the one that saves from danger or destruction, the one who brings salvation, and then, as if an afterthought, it adds specifically Jesus. Maybe one of if the Lord tarries another hundred years. I wonder what the dictionary will say then. The world is trying hard, brothers and sisters, to forget Christ. Even Christians, or others who are sympathetic to Christian ideals, we may be willing to say Merry Christmas, but by our own actions, we must show the way to Merry Christmas. The world has lost this way of celebrating Christ. Christmas means the next party, the next drink, the next dance, the next gift, the next present. Somehow we've lost our way. Christmas ought to be more than that. Christmas should say so much more. It should talk about how the world was in darkness. It should talk about how we were lost in sin. It should talk about how we couldn't find away and God sent his son down to this earth that you and I might have a right. Yeah. Amen. So let us not forget Christ. He is our Emmanuel. He is the Savior. He is really the reason for this season. Now I'm troubled. Troubled by the way the world is headed. But I have an everlasting hope that the God of 
the universe is not through with this old world yet. That the God who rules both heaven and earth is still in the blessing business. That the God who took control of the world is still making ways out of no way. He's still delivering us out of our circumstances. Still healing sin sick bodies. Still delivering folks who have been captivity. Still loving. Still giving. Still caring. Still making a way. Some of you this morning, the only reason why you're sitting here is because God made a way. Jesus came mm -hmm. down from 42 
generation. Why do we worship on Sunday? Well, because he proclaimed the good news of the gospel. Because he proclaimed the acceptable year of the Lord. Why do we worship on Sunday? Well, because when they crucified him and laid him in a tomb that happened on Friday, On Saturday, when the Jews were observing the Sabbath, Jesus was combating the enemies of hell. Amen. Amen. And then on Sunday morning, Yeah. 